Hi there, welcome to the Schwelven's Nest. My name is Sandra and I'm so glad you're here. For the first wood project today, I'm going to be using two of these crates from the Dollar Tree and these half inch round beads. I'm going to glue four of the beads on each corner of the first crate on the bottom of it, and that will create little raised feet for it. I think this just gives it more of a higher end look. Now I'm going to take the other crate and put it on top of the first one and this is going to create a double layered crate. I think this is just a really fun idea and something a little different rather than putting them side to side. So I'm going to add some hot glue just to the corners of the bottom crate and then place the other one on top and just hold it firmly until it sets up. This is how the crates look like now and I really like this effect. I'm going to give it a couple of coats of my white DIY chalk paint including the feet on the bottom and also a little bit on the inside at the top. I created this little label that I printed out on cardstock. Now the design itself actually came from Creative Fabrica, so I won't be able to share that with you, but I can share the link with you. So that will be down in my description box. I'm going to use my scissors with the open blade on the edge of the cardstock. And what that's going to do is just rough up the edge a little bit and make it look distressed and worn. I'm going to use hot glue on the back of the cardstock label and I'm just going to put a dot in each of the four corners and then I'll center it on the wooden crates and press it down. I wanted to create an effect like there were little tacks holding the label down. So I'm just taking my Sharpie marker and just freehanding a little circle in each of the corners. Using some black acrylic paint and just a regular paintbrush, I'm going to dab off the excess and give this a nice distressing with a dry brush look. First, I'm going to go around the edges and just kind of pull the brush downward and that will just give a little bit of a nice black edge. And then I'm going to go across the front of each of the sides and distress those a little too. Very carefully, I'm going to just drag my brush along each of the slats too, and that just helps to give it even more of an aged look. Once I finish that on all of the sides, I'm just going to very lightly drag my brush along the white. I haven't reloaded it with any paint yet because I want this to be a very light look. I'm also going to go over the Bloom and Grow label and give that a little bit of some black distressing too. I'm going to add some foam into the bottom of the crate. I'm just using a piece of pool noodle that I've cut in half and I'm going to just pile those in there. You can use dry floral foam, styrofoam, anything that you happen to have. You just need something to be able to push your flower stems into. To cover up the green of the pool noodle, I'm going to use some Spanish moss. And this is something that really drives me nuts. I love using Spanish moss for the look of it, but gosh, it makes such a mess. And I try really hard just to pull off pieces and that doesn't really work for me. So I tend to take my scissors and then just trim off some pieces and that works a little bit better for me. I'm going to be using these lavender sprigs from the Dollar Tree. I love these. They're just so pretty. I'm going to trim off each individual branch and then where there's two leaf bunches, I'm going to just pull them apart a little bit. And these are almost all going to be the same height. I like to put my lavender in so there's sort of like a nice big bunch. And that's kind of how it grows out in the gardens too. All the stems tend to be the same length, so you get the blossoms sort of all in one area. I'll just keep adding all of the stems until I have it full the way I like it. And this project is done.
If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you like what you see, I would love it if you could hit that red button. For this project, I cut out these welcome letters using my X-Tool laser cutting machine and I am just giving them a coat of Mod Podge because this will be out on my front porch and I want them to be sealed up a bit. Next tool is having an Easter sale. You have today and tomorrow yet to take advantage of some amazing savings on their website from their tools, their machines, and there's a bunch of different types of machines that might suit what you need. I know they're a little pricey, but you can do some payments as well on a monthly basis. So if this is something that interests you, maybe you'd like to start a little side hustle, then go down to my description box and click on the links for X tool to see what kind of sales they're offering right now. You're probably wondering where the O is in the word welcome. Well, this is going to be a porch sign craft kit that I'm going to have available up on my Etsy shop. In fact, it's already there. And I have created 20 different designs that you can choose from to replace the O. I'm actually just painting this tulip. I'm using green for the background and then for the petals on the front, I'm going to use a really pretty yellow. Since these pieces will be out on my porch, although it is covered, I do get a lot of wind and some different elements like the rain and snow and that kind of thing. So I'm going to use my Gorilla Glue clear grip with a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place while the clear grip can dry. You're probably noticing that up in the left hand corner, there is a bin full of different wood cutouts. I have created 20 different styles for you to choose from when you go on my Etsy shop and purchase the welcome letters. You can choose from six, eight, 10 or 12 different letters, depending on what you would like. And I've tried to cover all the seasons and I've tried to include all of the holidays and that sort of thing. But here's a quick look at what I have available. This is the style of letters that you get and look at how cute it looks with that honeybee. All of my shapes are double. So there's a backing and then there's one on top that has a little bit more detail to it. As I said, I've tried to include as many seasonal and even just regular farmhouse decor items that you can use on your sign year round. If there's something that I missed or you would like to have something specific for your sign, you can definitely leave me a note in the comments on the Etsy order and I'll get back to you and let you know whether I can create something especially for you. I'm using an old weathered fence board for my sign. It's almost six inches wide and it's about not quite six feet high. So I'm using again a combination of my clear grip from Gorilla Glue and hot glue to put all of these letters on. I decided to keep them the natural color. That was just the look I was going for, but you could definitely paint these white. Black would look amazing on something like this. And getting a fence board at the hardware store isn't all that expensive. You can probably find one for around $5. You probably noticed that I skipped putting the tulip down. I definitely don't want to permanently glue that down because I want to be able to change it out for the season. What I'm using instead of gluing it down or a hook is just some hook and loop Velcro. So basically it's two pieces of Velcro and I've got one glued to the board and then the other one glued to the back of the tulip and I'll be able to easily pull it off and on and change out whatever design I would like. I wanted to make my porch sign a little bit different than what you see usually. So I had this old crate that I had made probably last year, I believe. And I decided to take my sign. I did leave some space down at the bottom and I'm going to just slide it into the back of this crate and then screw it into place. And that will allow me to change out some flowers for this season. I could even line it with plastic and put some dirt in and plant some real florals, but I will probably stick to the artificial ones. I clamped the fence board in place and then just used three screws to screw it all together. And I did go from the back to the inside just because that was a little easier for me to manage. 
Once that was finished, I thought the front of the crate looked a little plain. So I did add a little laurel leaf stencil in gray and I really love how this turned out. The last project I have for you today is using this mailbox. I get these at Dollarama. They're about $2 and I think it's cute the way it is, but I want to zhuzh it up a little bit. I had a piece of this MDF board and I took it to my laser cutter again and just cut out this shape at the top and the bottom. This is going to be the backing of my mailbox and I want a little bit to stick out at the bottom as well as the top. When you get some of my craft kits, some of the larger pieces still have some char on the outside of them. I don't have time to clean that for you. So a tip to get rid of all of that char and the smell of it is to use a paper towel and just dab on some alcohol and that will get rid of all of the black char that you see on your project. Then just make sure that it's nice and dry before you start painting again. This is just going to be a decorative piece, but I still decided to use my Gorilla Glue clear grip and I'll just use some hot glue in the center to hold it down while the glue has a chance to set. I'm going to be gluing the mailbox so the top is a little bit higher up than the bottom and I really love the look of it so far. Using my white DIY chalk paint, I'm going to give this whole thing a couple of coats. To embellish this mailbox, I cut out this little double layered B. I'm adding some really bright yellow paint and I'm going to add some white into it because I want it to just be sort of a creamy yellow. I didn't want it to be too, too bright. I'm going to paint the backing yellow and then the top B is going to be just solid black. Once those pieces were dry, I just glued them together using hot glue. So I did add a little bit of yellow onto this bee, but then I didn't like the look of it. But now that I'm looking at it as I'm editing, it kind of looks nice from far away. Anyway, I ended up just painting him solid black again. I cut out another piece of wood that's just a rounded rectangle and I'm going to hot glue that right on top and that will become the lid or the flap for the mailbox. It's not going to be able to be opened. I spent probably a good hour trying to figure out how to put a hinge on this but that just didn't make it so it's just going to be a decorative piece. I'm going to use a dry brush technique for this as well, basically the same way I did the lavender, but I am going to add a little bit more black to this just because I want it to be a little bit more distressed. And actually, I didn't really want those lines to turn out that way. I didn't purposely do that, but that's how it turned out. And now that I'm looking at it, it looks pretty neat. I'm going to go around the edges just like I did with the first project. Before I apply the bee, I decided to distress a little bit of that yellow. It just seemed a little bit too brand new. And I'm going to take some white and just go over the black part of the bee as well. So this is going to be another little kit on my Etsy shop. You're going to get the two layers of bees, the yellow and the black. Of course, they'll just be the natural unpainted wood. And you'll also get these little cutout flowers. I just thought these were so pretty. I'm just painting them all white and then I'm going to take that creamy yellow and then just go over the flower portion as well. You will get two other pieces along with these and I'll show those to you in just a sec. Another part of this flowers and bees kit will be the words busy beehive. I'm going to be painting mine with black and I think that's going to be the perfect addition to my little mailbox. Here's what you'll get in the flowers and bees kit. You'll get the double bee. You'll get another single bee that's a little bit smaller. You'll get the words busy beehive and you'll get three sets of these beautiful cutout flowers. They're probably anywhere from three to four inches wide and these are beautiful accents that you can use on all of your projects. 
to finish off this project, I put one of the flowers on top of the lid. Then I glued the bee down and added the Busy Beehive letters sort of in a semicircle shape. I love how this project turned out and I hope you like it too. I hope you enjoyed my wood projects today. Normally I would post these on a Tuesday and call it Timber Tuesday, but today's Monday. So, okay, let's do Timber Monday. Make sure you do all the things, hit the like button, the notification bell, and the subscribe button. And make sure you go down to the description box and click on the link to my Etsy shop. I'm sure you're going to find something there that you're going to want to craft with. Bye for now. <music>